We're gonna shoot a short film on one lens in six hours, and if we don't get it done in six hours, I'm gonna format the cards and scrap the entire project. <laughs> now, I was pretty confident we could do this because we already had a script, we already had talent, and we already had a crew. So now all we had to do was shoot. Right? Enter problem number one. Since we're using such a small crew, I mic'd up the talent with wireless lapels. However, I quickly found out that the lavaliers that I wanted to use weren't actually compatible with the wireless mic packs that I was actually using. Now, the whole reason behind using these other mics was because I wanted to avoid lots of rustling from clothing. And the best way to do this is to use a lav mic that has a small surface area. But it seemed as if the locking collars were somehow stopping the connectors from transmitting the signal to the device itself. So we had to use these instead, which is not ideal, but it worked. So after sorting out this issue, we were able to finally get started. All right, so I'll get you up that side, Tommy, and hold you up high and much, much less line. Scene one, A, take one. Now it seemed to start off going all right, but we quickly realized that the gimbal that we were using just wasn't working for some reason. It like, it like wouldn't swap between modes and it wasn't balancing right on the easy rig. Now the whole reason behind using the gimbal in the first place is because the new Suray 35mm is designed to be used on gimbals and drones because it's so small and so lightweight, which is pretty awesome. But since we'd already burned through 30 minutes to get one shot, which we didn't even end up keeping, I made the decision to continue shooting handheld as it's what I know best. <sighs> Man, what a bloody nightmare. This is why I don't use gimbals. Been here for like an hour and we've got like shut off a door opening. <laughs> Stress levels are high. <sighs> One of the key benefits of shooting on anamorphic lenses is the fact that you can get these awesome lens flares in camera when using hard light sources such as a torch. And this is exactly why we actually wrote this script, just to use torches as the lights in the film. But unfortunately, it became very clear that the torches that we had were not bright enough to light up our talent without any extra ambient light. Why do we choose to just use lights? Yeah, the hardest thing is that I want the lighting to be good. So my first thought was to add some tube lights to simulate like street lamps, which kind of worked, but it just didn't look super natural. So we had to figure out a better solution to bring up the ambient level on the talent. Now I tried getting the talent to shine their torches at the walls to try like reflect more light onto their faces. But for some reason, the torches just weren't producing as much light as I thought they did from previous shoots. Plus, Trying to get the talent to create nice reflected light while also acting natural just was not going to work. I think the moral of the story is don't try and make a film where you light it with flashlights. Especially when the actors have to essentially light themselves. Where did I put those batteries? Now I have shot a ton of films and commercials before and they've all seemed to run pretty smoothly, but at the risk of trying a new style combined with challenging to do it in a short period of time, was starting to become a little bit much. It just looks shit because of no light. I think we're literally just gonna have to do like singles and like mid shots. But like this is exactly where you grow as a filmmaker and start making better films because without like challenge or risk, we tend to fall into what's comfortable and easy, which just leads to no growth at all. So with this in mind, and nothing that we'd shot so far, looking remotely close to something that I actually want to put my name on, I had to come up with a solution, and quickly. So I decided to call dinner early so the talent weren't just standing around while we are figuring out why the lighting just wasn't working and how to fix it permanently for the rest of the night. So with them distracted with food, I could actually sit down and work through this problem. And honestly, this is exactly what I needed. Within a couple of minutes, I knew what I was gonna do and how to actually fix it. So the solution, we grabbed a Forza 60B with a 60 centimeter softbox running on batteries and used this bounced into the ceiling to bring up the ambience in the room. And this also led to solution number two, which was the batteries in the torches were actually going flat, which is why they weren't as bright as I had remembered. I know, I know, but come on, like I had a lot on my mind. So with the new batteries in the torches affixed to the ambient light and four and a half hours left on the clock, we kicked off again. And now this time we actually started making some progress. The shots were actually flowing, talent were getting into rhythm and the lighting was looking good, finally. However, the first scene of five took us two and a half hours to complete, which was nearly three times the allocated time that we had 
in the schedule. This meant that we couldn't have any more setbacks if we didn't want this project to end up getting scrapped. Now, thankfully, scene two was easy. Just a few shots of the talent coming up to a landing on the second floor. Easy, right? As soon as we started shooting, I noticed something weird happening on the monitor. We suddenly had this like flicker from the torches. Like when, you know when you're shooting fluorescent lights? and they don't match the camera frequency. And this is not something that's easily fixed in post either. So after playing around for a few minutes, we actually found the torches had different dimming levels. However, what seemed to be the problem is that any setting that wasn't full brightness would flicker, which meant that it did this on the camera. Plus to add to the problem, sometimes just randomly, the torches would just decide to change modes by themselves even if the talent didn't touch the button on the back of them. So we had to watch the monitor like a hawk, just in case like halfway through a take, it changed, which it did several times. Take two, take three. So, the shit was going great, and we only had three more scenes to film with two and a half hours on the clock. However, on a good note, the Surrey lens was performing amazing, and the look was so nice. Like, the flares were adding a lot of visual appeal to the dark scenes, as well as adding a lot of interest to the, the wide shots as well. And I've always loved shooting on anamorphics because of these characteristics, and this new 35 mil from Surrey, Amazing. So now remember when I said that we were using wireless labs to make it easier? Yeah, well that kind of backfired on us when we we're moving into scene three. Because there was so much movement, we we're getting a ton of rustling from the clothing on the mics, so we had to resort to actually booming a mic in. Thankfully I did have a boom arm handy. However, oh, he decided to break after the first take. Like seriously, you you can't even script this stuff. This is just what happens behind the scenes. Like 95% problem solving and like 5% actually filming stuff. Plus we only had an hour and a half left on the timer. For the next shot on our list, we needed to get a close up of a torch. Now, typically we wouldn't shoot an entire film on say like a 35 mil lens. So the problem we faced was that the minimum distance on this is only 0.9 meters, which is not very close at all. However, to fix this, we used a set of diopters to decrease the minimum focus and allow us to get more of a macro shot on this lens. And diopters are a great tool to have in your kit even if you only use them on the odd occasion. And finally, we were actually ready to shoot the last scene, which thankfully wasn't too complex. And by this stage, it was almost midnight and everyone was starting to feel the effects. Is this the last scene? Uh, yeah, last scene, yeah. So after finally setting up everything, we were ready to finish the movie off. Take five, B, take five. We have less than 10 minutes left. Okay, last take. <laughs> <laughs> has to be the last day. Now, I don't know if it was because I was super tired, but at this time, I didn't realize that the last shot was over a minute long, so it was gonna be tight. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. 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 With 10 seconds to spare. Oh, no way! <laughs> Alrighty guys, so that is filming a short film in less than six hours. Big fan of the Saray uh, new 35mm carbon fiber lens. The look, absolutely amazing. If you want to see the full film, click here, here, wherever it is, and you go check out the full thing. Otherwise, stay creative, just be you. Have fun.